Hello, Monetization Nation. Bill Crawford owns an amazing pizza restaurant named Righteous Slice, which makes some of the best pizza I've ever had. When entrepreneurs own a business like the one Bill Crawford owns, it is important to have loyal customers. According to Mark and Blog, the probability of selling to an existing customer is 60 to 70%, while the probability of selling to a new prospect is only 5 to 20%. Bill Crawford graduated from Harvard with his MBA. He's a former Air Force fighter pilot and stealth bomber pilot. He's a professor of entrepreneurship, and he just may be the coolest pizza restaurant owner ever. In this episode, we discuss some of the ways Bill has developed a strong base of loyal customers. Tectonic shifts are constantly transforming the earth and business causing destruction and huge growth opportunities. I'm Nathan Gwilliam, the host of Monetization Nation, where we learn how to leverage business tectonic shifts to transform monetization. So Bill Crawford is a Harvard MBA, former fighter pilot and stealth bomber pilot, a professor of entrepreneurship, and a passionate creator of probably the best pizza I've ever had. He has a pizza place here in our hometown uh, called Righteous Slice. And it is, it is amazing pizza. And uh, I'm super grateful for Bill joining us today. Hey, good to be here. Thanks, Nathan. I actually feel like this is something we do. We do deliberately and it shows up uh, in the way that the business works. Um, in fact, just yesterday, uh, we, we hire people specifically um, looking for the ability to connect with customers. We don't, always, we don't always nail that, but we always are focused on how can we create a personal connection from the second someone walks in the door until they leave. And then we, we train to that. And, uh, you know, um, for example, uh, just last night, we hired a brand new guy and his whole um, personality. He's at the register. Somebody walks in and he'll say, dude, that's a cool shirt. Or man, I like your hat. Or, Hey, I noticed your phone number is uh, from Utah. Are you guys from Utah? You know, he just every, he's looking for a way to make a personal connection with every single person that comes in there. And then, uh, you know, cause the pizza, the pizza is good. But to me, if you, if you don't, if you don't like the pizza, but you actually like the people and the way you felt when you came in there, you're going to come back because uh, it's, it's not common for a uh, business to actually be thinking about how do I make someone feel great when they walk in the door? So we're, we're actually really focused on that. I love it. I love it. Um, connecting with customers through their passions. I know that you're in an interesting niche because pizza is actually a, a pretty high level passion for a lot of yeah. people. Yeah, it is. It's kind of funny because, um, you know, in a small market like Rexburg, if you're just going for the, the, the local crowd, um, you, there's not enough people here to support a, a higher end uh, food place or pizza business that we have. But <clears throat> we get a lot of people who come out of their way. They'll drive for hours because they've heard about us. I don't know about you, but when I travel, I always look for a little place I could never find anywhere else. Yes. And so there are a lot of people who are passionate about pizza and about good food. And, um, and we do a pretty good job serving those folks. Yeah. When I go to a, another town, what I like to do is I try to get away from the tourist traps. I try to go mm -hmm. where the locals are and I try to see where there's a long line of a packed crowd of locals. And yes. that's where I like to go. It's the kind of that bandwagon effect of locals. Yeah. And I think you've created that place here in Rexburg. Can you tell me a little bit more about how you do that, what your philosophy is, and, and maybe a story of how someone on your team has just provided amazing customer service? Um, this comes from, actually, we have a system that solicits feedback from customers proactively. And uh, the, the system basically, you can scan a barcode or you can text um, uh, win to a specific number and you'll be entered to win a hundred dollar gift card. But um, in the process, we ask you just one question, how was your experience with us? And you get, you know, one through five stars. 
And if the customer selects anything less than five stars, it asks them for, you know, what should we do better to improve? So we, we have a 4.7 star rating on that with thousands of data points. So it's actually, we, we feel like that internal metric is pretty good. But the other day, um, we had one not go so well. Give me just a second. I'm going to pull up one of these. I did not write this. So this comes from a customer. She gave four stars. The pizza was made to order, but we were charged full price, even though we mentioned the Monday deal. Also, one of the pizzas was really burnt. Now, realize Nathan, this is a four-star feedback for us. Right. This is written by um, one of our assistant managers who last year was in high school. So this is a very young person. Uh, hi, Grace. This is, um, this is uh, um, I'll just say Jack from Righteous Slice. So I'm going to include a free margarita coupon to hopefully make up for the burnt one. Thanks so much for giving us this feedback. It's awesome customers like you that make this place righteous. And then she writes back, wow, thank you. You know, so, um, so once again, when things go wrong, we own it and we let anyone who works there do whatever it takes to make the customer feel great about their experience. I love it. You've empowered the customer to, or the employee to make happy customers. That's right. Yeah, it's, it's like, that's our focus. In fact, during the hiring process, we actually train for about 15 minutes on that one thing. And then we put the, the candidate through what we call the trials of faith. And we have some secret shoppers come in and they basically do some of the more typical customer problems. Like we bring them a specific salad and, and then, and this is the, the candidate. They set the salad down. It's clearly on the ticket that they ordered it. And then the customer looks at the a candidate and says, I didn't order that. I ordered something else. And you're like, well, that's not what this, you know, it's like, how do you handle that? Yeah. So we actually see how they respond to those types of things and we select for it uh, in our hiring. So we're very focused on the types of things that our customers are looking for. And then we, we hire people, we train people. And then we empower them to actually do what it takes to delight those customers when they come in. Yeah, uh, you guys actually had me come in and do a, a secret shopper program a month or so ago where, and, and you had me hide where they couldn't really find me and, <laughs> and not respond when they called my name to kind of see yep. how the person would, would deal with it. Yeah, that is, the, that is exactly, uh, that happens all the time. It happened last night and I was like, but, uh, you know, you, you, you're dealing with humans and I've got human people trying to please other humans in a pretty complex environment. It's, it's, uh, it's a challenge, but it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that answers your question, but, uh, I does. feel like those are the types of examples of things that we do, both yep. the stories of, uh, of, of responding to problems um, I will tell you this also, uh, th it's not uncommon. Someone will come in. Uh, this happened a couple of days ago. Uh, a party came in, they were all dressed up like they'd been to some sort of uh, special event, maybe a wedding or something. And I was at the register and said, Hey, um, you guys are all dressed up with what's the special occasion. And they said funeral. Oh. And I was like, Oh, I'm so sorry. Right. And at that point, I, um, just gave them a free dessert. I just added it right in. Um, there was another, uh, guest who came in. He only comes in like maybe twice a year. Um, and you can tell by the way he's dressed that he's not super well off. And so he orders a lower, lower priced pizza. And, uh, I just gave him one of our high end drinks to go with it. And then he came back and ordered a dessert. And I said, you know what, this one's on me. We had just had a record day. Um, I felt like, let's just, uh, let's just give some of that back to people who I feel like uh, would be grateful for it. So, so that's the mindset we try to instill in, uh, in everyone who's working there. So because you focus so much on customer service and because you focus on such a quality product, it shows in your reviews. So I'm looking at Google My Business right now and I'm, I'm, I'll put it up to the screen in just a second so people can see it. But, you know, Pizza Hut has 244 reviews here in town and they're three stars. 
Papa John's Pizza's 147 um, reviews at at four stars. Um, let's see what other national chains are here. Little Caesar's Pizza is 428 reviews at four stars, which is um, that's a great benchmark because we're in a college town and Little Caesars do great. You know, they usually do yeah. really well in college towns. Yeah, and then yeah. Righteous Slice, who has been in business a lot less than Two all years. of those. Yeah, a much shorter period of time than any of those competitors. You have 916 reviews and four and a half stars. And, four and a half? Uh, well, I don't know four and, and how many. They just do the little the yeah. four star. You know what it is? It's, it's 4.7. 4.7. Okay. Yeah, um, we're up there. The only one that beats you on number of reviews is Pizza Pie Cafe, and they're at 1,200 <laughs> reviews, but they've been here as far as number of reviews. Yeah, but, but their pizza doesn't even compare. Like, it's not even in the same ballpark as yours. Theirs is a, a buffet quality pizza, you know, yeah. and you have premium pizza. Um, but they, what they have on you is, is time, you know, they just, yeah, longevity. Well. yeah, we'll, we'll hit, uh, we get between 30 and 50 reviews a month and we actively seek those reviews. So that's, we actually use technology, uh, and a pretty good technology platform to, uh, to seek that out. So if there's a, I don't know if, if that's something we want to talk about. Would that but, uh, hurt you at all if you talked about it? Is there any, are there any of the review platforms that would harm you if, if they knew you were using the technology? No, no. These, it's all plays within the rules these platforms okay. uh, expect. Yeah, then let's talk about that. So talk to me about how you have so many reviews because that's got to be affecting your business. When people look for a pizza place that, that you're doing so amazing in the local reviews. Yeah. So... Um, a couple of, well, so first of all, the system's called Ovation and just love these guys. In fact, I'll tell you that uh, during the downturn, you know, when everybody closed their dining rooms and, you know, layoffs were happening and the coronavirus was, was uh, having a major effect throughout our entire economy, um, restaurants actually were hit pretty hard. They laid people off. Um, we, we closed our dining room. We, laid, we didn't lay anyone off, but we cut hours back by about 50%. We discontinued our streaming for our TV service. We went to our landlord and said, I'm not sure we're gonna be able to pay our rent. And I uh, we went to the bank and said, not sure we're gonna be able to make the loan payment. Um, we, we suspended all non-essential services, but we did not cut back on this particular service. We kept paying at full price the whole time. Um, these guys are a startup out of Utah and they've just done a great job for us so um, I talked about it earlier. They're the, they're the service we use where you send a text to ask how your experience was. And I mentioned that if it's four or less stars, the message comes to us. But if a customer gives it five stars, then the next screen says, um, would you be willing to leave a review? So it simply um, asks for a review from those people who indicated already they've had a great experience. And... Um, and now we're working on integrating that with our point of sale so that when someone joins our loyalty program or they order online, they provide their phone number, uh, we can actively send them a text saying, how was your experience with us? Yeah. And just basically asking that question, um, it, it generated a lot of reviews for us. It kept the bad reviews. It didn't keep the bad reviews out. That's not the right way to think about that but it gave us a chance to talk to people who were less than thrilled before they, before they um, went out and gave a, a bad review. Yeah. And so it gives us a chance to make it up to them. So it's a, it's a great system and it's how we've um, now our original goal was just to get a thousand reviews and we're going to dump this system. But the, the, the truth is I see greater value in the ability to engage with customers whether I get a review or not. I love it. How have you seen that such a good listing in reviews other than having process improvement data? How have mm -hmm. you seen that that's affect your, affected your monetization? Uh, it's been really good for us. In fact, we don't spend a lot on marketing um, because uh, reviews tend to be something 
that really influence the buying decision. So when someone is trying to decide where should I go, um, two things happen. Actually, I'm disappointed because when someone searches for pizza in Rexburg, we come in like fourth or fifth. Our, our organic search is not very high, but uh, very few people will click the first thing. I think, you, you know more about this than I do, but I don't think yeah. they're clicking the first thing that comes up. And when they see the paid ad, they're not necessarily clicking it. And uh, so they'll scroll through and when they see a 4.7 star, the next thing they're gonna look for is- Who has picture. the most reviews? Who has the yeah. most reviews that are above, you know, four and a half stars. Mm -hmm. and, and that's yeah. usually who most people click on. Yeah. And so we're, we're not, well, I can tell you this on the number of reviews versus the, um, the, 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 the quality ranking, the, the number of stars we get, um, we're doing pretty well. And so we do pull in a lot of people just from that. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. Like, yeah, you're, you're doing a great job. I'm, I'm very impressed with how, what a short period of time you've been in business. Um, how, how well you're doing with reviews is, is pretty amazing, especially with some well-established um, chain companies as well, you know, that you're mm -hmm. going up against. Yeah. And we just, we just feel like, like I said, the fact that we're listening and paying attention to that is what makes us unique. It's like, and anyone could do it. Um, the converse of that, Nathan, is we, we actually sometimes get a lower star ranking, but it's still a good review for us. Yeah. Because if someone comes in expecting the wrong thing, um, that's bad. And so uh, when, when we get those two star, one star reviews, and it says things like the pizza is always burnt, <laughs> um, that's actually good for us. Yeah, I because, love your burnt crust. It's so good. Yeah, it's, it's part of what makes us special. And so if someone says, oh, it's thin, it was you know, only 12 inches, like, there are things they'll complain about in those reviews that are actually good for people to know before they make that purchase decision. Because I'd rather have those, those low reviews steer people away who have similar expectations. And so that, you know, I've, I've come to embrace, there are no bad reviews. Uh, the only time I feel bad, and I do feel bad, is when I can see from the review that we did not deliver on our brand promise. Yes. And so if we delivered on the brand promise and they gave us one star, I totally am comfortable with that. But when I read through the lines and see, oh, we, we misfired on that one, I reach out to that person directly and try to make it right. And I don't care if they change their review, but I care that we, that we, um, that we sincerely do our best to serve their needs. One of the tectonic shifts that we talk about in the book is the democratization of video, how everybody can make video. It's so inexpensive. It's so easy to distribute video. It's so easy to watch video. Everybody's got access from their mobile devices to, to watch videos. Um, and, and once you get those videos in front of customers, well, and because everyone has the cameras, they're more credible because you have real customers making their own videos. That, yep. are, that are more credible and believable than these perfectly made videos that corporations do. And then when people, your customers watch the videos, they, are, um, they emotionally connect and they establish credibility far better than any photo or text ever could. You know, yeah. Except for a face-to-face one-on-one experience, there's, there's really no substitution for video. Yeah. Yeah, we've struggled because I think if you approach video like we have sometimes with the mindset of I'm going to make something that advertises my business, it doesn't go very well because no one cares. Like no one, no one cares about yep. what you have to say about your business. Um, they care about what they care about. So they're interested in stuff that's interesting to them, right? Yep. And if you make the video with an inward focus on what you, what, what, you want them to care about is not going to work. That's right. Um, but when you make something funny or interesting or in, it typically has to be pretty short, um, then, then they'll, uh, they'll watch it. In fact, the weird, weird thing is we made a, I made a live video uh, by accident of me making pizza dough as a demo for some students. And then um, we shared that. I think we shared that on our, on our, on our own uh, business channel. 
that got more interest than anything we could have made as an ad. And it was just me in my home kitchen making pizza dough and showing the people on the screen, yeah. this is how we do it. Because it was and, real. It was authentic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so it's like it's a, a, unintentional, right? And, and if you think about uh, making a video for how do I sell more stuff, you're probably, it's probably not going to go very well. Okay. All right. I've, I've used just about all the time I've, you committed ah. for this and I'm so grateful. Thank you for sharing your time and your wisdom. Are there any last questions that, that I should have asked or any other last story you'd like to share? When you, when you asked about, you know, I like to give free things away. It's true but I've never done like a mass come in today for a free yeah. thing. Everyone can get it. And I actually feel like being deliberate and thoughtful about that has been a real blessing for us Okay. because we haven't had to reach out. We haven't had to deal with the aftermath of lots and lots of unhappy people. We haven't tried to acquire the wrong people. So we've been very deliberate and thoughtful about who we're going to give the free stuff to. And, uh, and that's just been, it's been a really good thing for us. So being generous and kind and thoughtful um, and realizing that um, when people, when people show loyalty, being loyal to them. In fact, you know, I've never heard this term, Nathan. In fact, we might get rich just off of this. <laughs> you know, we talk about customer loyalty. Yep. How about, how about the company loyalty program where we look at our customers and we are loyal to them. Yeah, you flip it on its head. Love we it. find a way to say, look, these guys have been so willing to keep coming back, even though we've made mistakes. Let's be loyal to our customers. And when, when, I, when I have customers that just show that, being grateful for them and being loyal to them, I think is, a, is, is a something that we've been operating by, but I've never articulated it that way. So Yeah, I think you guys have done that. I think after your first year in business, I, I think you told me I was one of your top 10 grossing customers or something like uh -huh. that. And you yeah. threw a party for us and invited us in. And I was out of town that week and I was bummed. I wasn't yeah. able to go, but yeah, uh, I think you've done a good job of trying to be loyal back to us. Yep. Yep. You know, um, we've talked about, so we do this Christmas promotion where you come in and you can get an envelope with every purchase you bring back the envelope in January unopened and see what you've won. They all have a prize in them. It's, it's a little gimmick, but um, we, we, we pay about $3,000 for this, which, you know, our typical marketing budget in a month is three or $400, not thousands. We don't get a lot of sales lift out of it. And so this year we discussed not doing it, but I realized um, to me, it's a chance just to be generous. It's a chance to do something fun and creative, but also, to, to, I, I don't know what we'd do if we didn't have that party in February with our, with our most loyal customers. And so I think we're going to do it, not so we can boost our sales, but so that we can be grateful. And if any of my watchers or listeners ever are heading to Yellowstone, Rexburg is on the way. Some of the closest hotels to Yellowstone are in Rexburg. And uh, it's one of those must stop places. They have amazing pizza and amazing shakes and uh you will absolutely not regret it thank you All bill right. thanks nathan have a great day goodbye See ya. if you enjoyed this interview and want to learn more about bill or connect with him you can visit the blog to see a link to his linkedin page or if you're ever headed to yellowstone and passing through rexburg idaho be sure to stop for some of the best pizza you'll ever have at righteous slice Thank you so much, Bill, for sharing your stories and knowledge with us today. Here's some of my key takeaways from this episode to help us build customer loyalty. Number one, hire friendly employees to connect with our customers and make them feel appreciated. Number two, train our employees to be able to handle difficult situations with customers. Number three, seek reviews through review management services. Number four, use reviews to make sure our customers are satisfied if something went wrong, make it right. Number five, give all our employees the power to make it up to unhappy customers. Number six, connect with our customers through authentic videos. Number seven, give back to our customers. 
Show them that we appreciate them. Did you like today's episode? Then please follow these channels to receive free digital monetization content. Number one, get a free monetization assessment of your business or subscribe to the free monetization e-magazine at monetizationnation.com. Number two, subscribe to the Monetization Nation YouTube channel or podcast. Number three, follow Monetization Nation on Instagram and Twitter. What great strategies have you seen for building customer loyalty? Please join our private Monetization Nation Facebook group and share your insights with other digital monetizers. Thanks for joining us for this episode. I hope you have a fabulous day. Do you want to become a better digital monetizer? To receive great monetization stories and secrets, please go to monetizationnation.com and join free. And if you liked today's episode, please subscribe to the show and share it.